Good morning, Pre-AP kids. Mr. D here coming to you from our wildflower garden in Tennessee. I hope you are all doing well. And uh, today's lecture is going to be on chapter four. And the main thing we're going to talk about today is rivalry. So to, to sum it all up, Gene basically was under the impression that Finney was out to wreck his studies. And he thought that it was a deliberate sort of um, sabotage effort on Finney's part because he was jealous that Gene was going to graduate top in the class. And the most important thing, and I commented on a lot of your uh, responses over the past couple of days, was that the idea of this rivalry, was it one-sided? Was there really truly a rivalry between Finney and Gene? Well, what we come to realize is this rivalry is absolutely one-sided. Um, Phineas even admits that he didn't even know that Gene needed to study. He said to Gene, when Gene was talking about studying for an upcoming test and not really wanting to go to a suicide society meeting, he's like, you, you want to study? You need to study? And immediately after he says that, Finney says to Gene, stay here, stay here. You don't have to go. It's no big deal. And then Gene's like, no, I have to go. And in his mind, he admits that Finney just thought things came to you the way his athleticism came to him. And he says how that made Finney very unique. Now, something that you have to think about with everything going on in this chapter is, are we getting a true version of Finney or are we getting a romanticized version? We are getting Finney's characterization through Gene. We're not getting it from an omniscient, detached narrator who's just commenting on things that are happening. And because of that, that's what I want you to explore today in your uh, reflection. I want you to explain to me whether you feel any aspects of Finney's personality are exaggerated or romanticized by Gene. And if you feel they are, I want you to support where and how. So make sure you're quoting from uh, the text in your response. If you feel that we are getting an accurate response, we're getting an accurate portrayal, well, give me some aspects of that accuracy. So ultimately what we're looking at here is Gene's reliability as a narrator. And reliability of narrator is something that you're going to be analyzing a lot in your upper level English classes. Um, if you're in AP literature in 12th grade, especially there. Is the narrator reliable? Why or why not? So that's what I want you to work on for your reflection. Now I'll make a couple other comments on the chapter and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up. So the very first paragraph of chapter four, Gene wakes up and he talks about how everything looked gray. And he uses the word dead multiple times. He talks about how the ocean looked dead, Phineas looked dead, the light was drained, the dead gray waves were hissing along the beach, and everything was gray and dead looking. That's significant foreshadowing, and you know by the end of the chapter when Phineas has his accident, it was probably leading up to that. So, when they're at the tree that day, they're going to do this double jump. And when they go to do the double jump, something happens with Gene, and he jounces the limb. And when he jounces the tree limb, Phineas loses his balance, and Gene kind of sees it in slow motion where he's just like suspended in the air with this look of what's going on, what happened. And then thud, he hits the ground, and... That's it. Gene doesn't even think. He jumps right from the tree, and then he's down there, and they're trying to, trying to help Finney. So that's where chapter four ends. Now, something else you can think about, but I'm not asking you to do any writing about this, is just the idea of what on earth happened in that tree. That's going to come up a lot um, throughout the remainder of the book, and many of you, you're already reading ahead. You've already read the book, or you're um, just getting into chapter five in these next couple of days. Um, a lot of things are going to come back to what really and truly happened in that tree. So think about how, um, how secretive 
our thoughts are. There are things that we harbor in our minds that we would never, ever, ever express to another person. Well, we're in that place with Gene. We are in that part of his mind where all of his thoughts are sacred, they're intimate, they're, they're his own. So what you have to realize with that is um, you could use that to support Gene's reliability as narrator. But then again, you could also use the reflective nature of how this story is told. Because there are so many parts where you realize that we're almost um, stepping out of the present and looking back as an older, wiser person. And you can use that reflective nature to say, well, he's looking at it in a different light because he's older and wiser and seeing things differently. So you decide how you want to support that. Um, hope you guys are doing well. Hope your families are healthy and that you're having a good day. Uh, this is Mr. D signing off a separate piece, chapter four. Out.